Hey, it looks like uh, Double Denim is making a comeback. Double Denim. Double Denim. Double Denim. Double Denim. Double 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 Denim. Double 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 Denim. All right, so for today's test, we have that St. Aldebaran BFS XG paired to a customized, modified, spiral-wrapped G. Loomis 5-foot IMX ultralight rated to 4-pound test. We have 4-pound test, suffix 832 ice line, and we're going to be throwing a Lucky Craft little snacky, which weighs in at 1 16th of an ounce. And these things are fun to throw in streams like this. And you can see quite a good bit of, amount of current, lots of boulders, very scenic. The flowers in bloom, springs in full force. You can hear a, it sounds like a squirrel kind of chirping at me. And uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be using this rod for the first time. And then we're going to switch reels to the Daiwa Airstream Custom. We're literally just going to take the line off of this reel, back it off. I already have a leader tied at the base of this pool. And we're gonna continue fishing along, just swapping reels to see how they compare to one another. So this, my friends, is the first cast for this customized G. Loomis 5-foot IMX. The brake is set to four. All the magnets are installed on this reel. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, wow. Haha. <laughs> we like when we do things for the first time and they work out as planned. Except for the fact my left foot is now slipping down a boulder. I dig it. So the backhand cast, the brake set to four, and it's kind of arcing a little bit to my right to the left. So the braking seems to be a little bit high, but unfortunately, there is a fairly inconsistent breeze. Like right now, it came at my, I'd say, four o'clock, but it's been coming at, you know, my 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 nine o'clock, and it keeps on switching and swirling which is kind of strange, but we're at a higher elevation stream here in New Jersey and there's an approaching low pressure system. So we have the brakes set a little bit higher than we would really like. We're gonna go down a little bit to four and a half to see if it'll straighten out a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a big difference. That was a very big difference. It shot off the rod tip at a uh, unexpected rate, if we're being honest. We don't want to end up in the woods across the river. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Now, this isn't really the fishiest of pools. I just wanted to set up someplace scenic. That cast went from left to right, but it stayed perfectly straight off the rod tip. So the braking at three and a half is perfect for these conditions in this lure with this rod. We just tuck that place right, that cast right at the base of those sticks. Right where we had aimed. I'll go a little bit further now. Right above the sticks. Perfect. And go a little bit further, even still, perfect, right on the top of that boulder. We kind of wanted to come around it, but it kind of hung up on the, the crest of the boulder. We were about four inches off on our cast. <laughs> and when I say light, I think this whole setup weighs six ounces. I didn't go crazy on the guides. I decided to go with the uh, American Tackle Thai Forge along with their runner, runner guides up through here. They're really nice, they're cheaper than the Fuji's. They work just as good. I can't tell the difference, they're super light. Uh, this is the fourth rod that I've used the Thai Forge guides with. And uh, I'm digging it. I did use a Fuji Arowana tip for no good reason. <laughs> Other than I like the fish itself, the arowanas are really cool. So we're having fun. We're not again at the fishiest spot. There's a lot of current, uh, a lot of big seams, 
and I'm willing to admit this pocket gets hit quite often. I just picked this because it's very scenic. And uh, we're gonna make a couple more casts, just kind of see how it performs accuracy-wise. You know what, I'm gonna put on a lure that stands out a little bit more. It's just a different color Lucky Craft, a uh, little snacky, or bevy minnow, I think, or bevy minnow snacky is what it's called, I think. This is their brown trout pattern. And I use the size zero must-had fast hatch clip. Out of the package, these come with a dual lock snap, which is the exact same size as this thing. So if you're concerned about the clip spooking fish, I, I promise you it has no effect, none that I can tell. You know, bigger clips, uh, barrel swivels with clips, you, you don't want to be using them. They weigh too much, they alter the lure's intended action, and they add a lot of bulk and a lot of weight. But this must add fast hatch clip, clip in the smallest size, phenomenal. Enough that I probably have 30 or 40 packs at home. I bought 20 and I saw them on sale again and bought them again, so I got another like 10 or 15. Size zero and size one are all I use. Anything larger, I'm using a uh, tactical angler clip. I love it. I love this setup. This is absolutely brilliant. I've been using a Daiwa uh, Legend Gulf Coast six foot 10 ultralight for a long time. And it, it's a more versatile rod. It can throw a 16th of an ounce fairly well, uh, but I'll also throw a half ounce with it and it loves it. But this, in terms of how it performs with just ultralight, 16th of an ounce, um, I don't think I can ask for anything more. I mean, you see that cast? Every time I've aimed for that left stick, I have been within three to four inches of that left, left stick. You can't ask for anything more. And this is, the, again, the first time I'm using this rod. It's acid wrapped. I'm really, this line is brand new to me. I've only used it one trip prior. So it's one of those things where you really, really can't ask for much more than uh, what you get here. You could probably find these Loomis 5-foot IMX spinning rods on, on eBay for cheap. Pick them up used. And then just buy $30 worth of guides. If that. And you have an absolutely phenomenal DFS rod. And for you guys out there wondering about the spinning reel seat, again, this was a spinning rod. I never changed the reel seat. This is what makes it kind of convenient. I don't want a trigger on my BFS rods because it's all, the casting is all wrist action, backhanded, everything. Is, nothing requires you to be locked into it. And this being so small and the rod being so light, the rod, if you look at the balance point, it's it's the, the lure is in the water with the lure hanging in the water it, it's it's almost it's a balances tip up with a 4.6 ounce reel just to give you an idea how light the setup is it balances tip up with a 4.6 ounce reel with the lure hanging off the rod tip now this reel holds a lot more line, a lot less line maybe about 20 yards of uh, a difference so that's pretty significant we have this this spool kind of over spooled which means it's going to be hotter so it's going to be more prone to backlash something worth taking into consideration all right now that we got that out of the way let's go ahead back out to where we were standing earlier And there is some weather coming. I just felt some raindrops. The clouds are getting darker. Hopefully we can get this uh, testing session complete. And uh, we're gonna start with the brakes set midway. We're fairly familiar with Daiwa brakes, but we're not familiar with uh, a BFS spool made by Daiwa, put in a Daiwa reel. And again, four pound test suffix, 832 ice line, four pound test leader, Lucky Crap Little Sadaki. Whoa, okay. Okie dokie. 
Um, that was nice. No complaints there. Now we're coming from probably my favorite reel in my entire arsenal being that Aldebaran BFS. And if you see me fish before, you know that I like to fish one-handed, flicking that drag star. And in the unboxing video I did for this reel, I mentioned that the Aldebaran BFS XG has an extra point on the star. And sometimes when I flick that drag star, it's enough to keep my finger locked and kind of pinch it. And it doesn't happen often, but it'll happen two or three times a trip. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's an inconvenience. This, this is what I'm used to. This specific configuration, that drag star and how it's configured, it makes it a joy to fish one-handed right out of the gate. That's pretty nice. And the brake set to ha halfway point, uh, who'd have guessed it, but it's perfect. I mean, casting distance aside, I mean, it doesn't matter. I want to, I'm throwing ultra light baits. But first, first cast aiming at that left stick, and guess what? I came within three inches of it. That's how comfortable this reel is to cast with the brake setting at 10. And there is the, the spool tension adjustment I was set so that there is ever so slightly a little bit of a spool tension. Of course, I had to go screw things up and change things. <laughs> so that we backed off the spool tension a little bit, let's go up one in the brakes. There we go. That feels good. That feels very good. I thought this reel was going to be a little squirrely with... <laughs> As I said that, it got squirrely. We went for a little bit longer cast. So that tells me that the brake setting on this is a little bit lower than what we were throwing with the Aldebaran. Because when I was shooting for a little bit extra distance, in no time did I really feel like I had to be careful of going up in those trees. And this one, it just kind of felt like it wanted to go a little bit further with the amount of effort that I, I put into it. Backyard junk science, I know, it's just kind of what I felt. But yeah. This is a nice little reel, guys. And we're talking, what, $275 for this thing? And the, I paid $330 for my Aldebaran. Now, the Aldebaran, it's more com it feels more compact. Uh, the weight, I'll, I don't know. I don't know. It's, this, both of them are fairly lightweight. I mean, they're both bouncing tip off this. And this might be a little heavier, the Diola. It feels a little bit wider in, in, in the hand. It's, a, it's an alpha spring. The cork knobs, you don't feel the cork, they're rubberized. They look nice, but that seam kind of does stand out. But brilliant casting. Absolutely for a light lure tool. I mean, geez. Now what happens if we go way up in the braking? Does it really crush the, the casting performance? Okay. I mean, I was aiming at that stick and it came up with just a little short, but there was no fade or drift that would put it offline. Yeah, that was another four inches from that little twig. Man, I'm digging it. And that's what the brake set to absolute max. Usually, whenever you go too high in braking, <laughs> See we see how we we hit, aimed we landed a few feet to the left. That's because that's where I was aiming with the uh, the brakes at the max. That was the same spot that I'd aimed at the last. You know, when I'm picking my target, I would I would identify the target, and then I would aim two feet to the left. That's what I was doing when I had the brake set up to uh, the max, and I aimed at the same spot when I dropped the brakes. I like this, real guys. I, I really do. 
I really dig it. And in terms of the feel, as far as the retrieve is concerned, it has a different feel than the Aldebaran. The Aldebaran, for as smooth and extraordinary lightweight as it feels, it has that Shimano feel where it's kind of heavy in the gears. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good way to put it. It's, you flick the handle, it doesn't spin for 30 seconds. It's more of a controlled uh, retrieve feel, whereas this one, it, it, it just feels super light and, and very free, I guess the best way to put it. I like this setup. I like both of this setup. I, I like the, <laughs> the drag star in this a hundred times better. It's not, to, to, I don't want to say it's a game changer or a deal breaker, but it, it sort of makes a big, to me, it makes a big difference for the style that I fish. It, it really does. As stupid as that sounds. The freaking amount of points on the drag star. That's, that's how picky we're being. But I, I like the clicky drag. I, the clicky drag on the Aldebaran, that's huge. Why they didn't put it in this thing, I don't know. They should have just put it in. Now what I wanted to try to see if I could do is, with the brakes turned all the way up, is if I can cast it with my pointer finger. Now, now, now. <laughs> I thought maybe it would be kind of cool. It'd be like a new way to do a reach free. I, no, it makes, it makes no difference. So the brakes turned all the way up. What happens if we just do like a little simulating no room to cast a back cast and just snap it out there. Hopefully the GoPro picks it up. Okay. Go down a little bit. We'll simulate the same thing. Uh, arm is basically all the way out left, like I'm a crossing guard. Okay. That's just using my wrist, nothing else. We're going to do the same thing with the same arm out in the opposite direction. So we have to take a very short drop. Just the wrist, pointer finger on the rail seat. Oh, that blew up a little bit. That was with the brakes set pretty high actually. That's actually one of the major benefits to BFS uh, casting is being able to do that whereas we, and, and have control after you cast it. Whereas with spinning gear, you lose all that control because once you're like overextended, you can't really feather or control or close the bail. There we go. That went straight out to there. And that was with the right hand. Same point. A little bit longer drop. We're about six feet to the left from where we want it to be. Put the brakes are very high. I don't know where my camera cut off. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I was kind of ranting about the price of this reel being around 275. We'll call it 300 to give the benefit of the yen and Rakuten and websites that are selling it. But for under 300 bucks, you get a, a Daiwa reel with a laminated carbon fiber handle that is absolutely beautiful with the cork knobs. And then you have the, I, I, when I was ranting earlier, I said this is the new Steve CT70, that's 700 bucks. But then it's like, but what about all the other Steezes and the Zillions and all the other special edition Tatulas and Zillions? And you're telling me you can't give a carbon fiber handle? Come on. 
That's bullshit. That's that's being cheap for no good reason. Same thing with Shimano. For real. Shimano needs to incorporate carbon fiber handles as well. You've got Ebba Garcia. They've been doing it for, what, eight years now? Fluger's got freaking carbon fiber handles on spinning wheels, for Christ's sake. So, yeah, so I'm going to go and uh, catch myself a fish. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was very interesting, very fun. This is the first time I've ever did an all-in-the-water spool swap on a BFS, BFS reel and uh, compared them side by side. But I'm kind of glad I did. I'm really impressed by this. I wasn't sure how it was going to perform because I was so comfortable with that Aldebaran. And, uh, yeah, I like this reel. So if anybody's looking for a Daiwa BFS reel on a budget, don't buy a Daiwa Pixilla that somebody created and converted, you know, 15 years ago like I did myself. Uh, buy this thing. <laughs> this is a, uh, an excellent value for a Daiwa BFS reel. Nice little reel. Nice little reel. <laughs> hey, it looks like uh, Double Denim is making a comeback. Double Denim, Double Denim, Double 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 Denim, Double Denim, Double Double Denim, Double Denim, Double Double Denim, Double Denim, Double Double Denim. Great, now I got that stuck in my head. Let's see if I can double down them. Double down them. Double down them. Double down them. Double 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 down them. Double 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 down them. Double down them. Double down them. Double denim, double double denim, double denim, double double denim, double denim, double 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 Paying the price on that one. Run it, run that bank right there. Ah, came back for it. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. There's an eagle again. This is a big fish. Ooh. Oh, another good one. Midair, took a shot at him. Get the rod tip high in the air. Get him around those boulders. Another dumping, 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 dumping.